Today, I want to build one of those tube light sculptures I've noticed on some YouTube channels like Dave2D and MKBHD. I'm not sure how theirs are constructed, but I want to build a combined unit consisting of a base and two tube lights that can be adjusted to tilt in multiple directions. Also, sticking with my current tradition, I'm going to be building this project using PVC. To see how I do this, stay tuned. Keep in mind, this will be a basic construction for a tube light sculpture just to give you an idea of how to build one. There are many things that can be done to customize this build by using things like 360 degree LED tube lights, colored LED tube lights, different multiples of lights, and so on and so on. Lots of possibilities, so let's get started. I'm going to build the base of the lighting unit, working on this project from the bottom up. The parts needed for the base are four one foot long PVC pipes, four elbows, and some crushed rocks. Build the first three sides of the base using three pipes and two elbows. Secure the joints with screws in an inconspicuous location, but not the very bottom. Before closing up the base with the last side, I'll pour as much of the crushed rock into the PVC pipe as I can, shaking the base to spread the rocks around within. After that, I can put the last of the PVC and screws on to close everything up. And here's the completed base of my tube light sculpture. Keep in mind, I'm building this sculpture with no artistic goal in mind. I'm sticking to just the construction steps for this video. Prepare both tees to be snap-ons as shown here. In this video, instead of measuring one half inch beyond the center of the diameter, I only measure three-eighths of an inch. Depending on how tight you need the tee to fit, three-eighths inch is extremely tight. I'll press the tees onto any of the sides of the base where I think they'll look best swiveling side to side. Also, if I find the tees are too hard to snap on, I can trim away at the cut edge by 1 16th inch at a time, then retest the snap-on. Cut two 10 inch pieces of PVC pipe. Raise the blade of the table saw to 3 8 inch height and set the fence 1 and 1 half inch away from the blade. Make a cut along the width of the pipe. Move the fence further away from the blade for a distance the same thickness as the tube light socket, less the thickness of the blade. Make another cut along the width of the pipe. Using a drill bit that's the same size as the width between bolt cuts, drill the ends in between bolt cuts to remove this section from the PVC pipe. As is, the tube light will fit loosely into the sleeve. Raise the table saw blade 1 and 3 8 inch, then cut along the width of the sleeve 4 inches from the end opposite of the previous slotted cut and also on the exact opposite facing side of that cut. I know that sounded a little complicated, so if you didn't get that, just watch the video. Now make two cuts to form a one half inch wide slot along the four inch section just created on that same side. If you're using a table saw, it's okay if the cut goes beyond the four inch section a little. One thing I want to mention is that the tube light I'm using is not the one I'll be installing at the end of this build. I'm waiting for those lights to be delivered, but in the meantime, I thought I'd continue shooting with some stand-in ones. Electrically, they will not work, but physically, in terms of size, they should serve as an accurate stand-in for the build process up until I actually need to power them on. Insert a 1-inch dowel through the entire sleeve and compress the 4-inch section around the dowel using a couple of hose clamps. Also, use something to wedge down the dowel against the inside of the PVC on the socket end. 
It might already be pressed against one side of the PVC from compressing the PVC on the other end, but the dowel must stay pressed against the same side while it's being heated in the next step. Over a stove top, heat only the 4 inch section of the sleeve to allow the PVC to permanently compress to the smaller diameter of the dowel. Over a high heat, this should take about 60 seconds. Be sure to keep the sleeve moving so no single spot heats up too much. After 60 seconds, douse the hot sleeve in water and check the size. Reheat and reshape the sleeve if needed. The final step in constructing the sleeve is to attach the electrical socket that powers the tube light. Slide the tube light socket into the PVC pipe slot, then slide the tube light through the sleeve's 4 inch section and all the way through till it hits the socket. Position the tube light and socket so that the prongs of the light bottom out in the socket. When everything is lined up correctly, glue the socket in place and let it dry for 24 hours. You may need to use wedges and or tape to hold the socket securely while the glue dries. With this being a single-ended power tube light, the non-live end of the tube light does not have any electrical purpose. So, in my sculpture use of this tube light, it can be covered up with anything, even cardboard. Since I am avoiding all artistic steps in this build, I am going to skip this step. The tube lights I purchase accept power directly from an electrical outlet in the range of 120 to 277 volts. Here is how I did all the electrical work. I want to control the lights individually, so I'll be using a power cord from each tube light. I know it sounds impractical, but I'll show you why I'm doing this in a bit. Cut the power cord to about 2 feet in length. Strip 3 8 inch from the power cord insulation. Twist the wires to stiffen them, then insert the stripped wire into each of the poles of the light tube sockets. Don't worry about which is positive and which is negative. As for covering the loose wiring at the connection, zip tie the wire to the PVC pipe. Wrap the entire section of zip tie, wire, and socket with electrical tape. Now, to explain the idea of having two separate power cords, I picked up a Genie Smart Outlet to provide the on-off switch capability. The old school way would have been to use an inline switch on each cord, but using the Genie gives me the ability to control the power from an app. This also works well for safety since it keeps the DIY electrical work within the boundaries of the stand and the only part of the electrical that extends beyond the stand is the part coming from the Genie which can probably handle more abuse. I think this tube light sculpture came out pretty good. You can add your own artistic touches to this but one thing I'd recommend is once you've built this sculpture and want to change the tube lights there's a possibility you may need to build another set of sleeves to hold the new tube lights. The sleeves are pretty simple to recreate and are a separate piece from the rest of the sculpture so that should make things a little easier. One thing I've needed for a long time is better lighting for my videos. I don't typically care what the lighting looks like as you can see in most of my videos. After doing this project though, I felt since the sculpture can produce a substantial amount of lighting and can be adjusted or customized as needed, I may as well see if I can utilize it for my videos. We'll see how that goes. I hope this video can help some of you content creators and maybe even some of you homeowners. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.